Hi everyone, welcome back to 33 Founders. Chase and I are really excited to bring you a special Founders episode this morning with the founders of Hello Doctor. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thank you. We're really happy to be here today. So the three of you are solving an enormous enormous need in the medical industry. Can we start out with you telling us about the app and how Hello Doctor works? Sure, so I'll start. Um, so Hello Doctor is a mobile solution that empowers patients to control their health. Um, we enable patients to collect all of their medical records, paper and digital, on a mobile app on their iPhone and iPad, uh, manage them in real time when they're talking to their doctor, literally get to any medical record that they need in two taps, um, and now we're starting to also help patients understand their medical records by helping you figure out exactly what's wrong with you or track your medical records with simple visual charts and dashboards. So typically when a startup introduces something new to the market, big industries are pretty hesitant and sometimes very resistant to adopt it. So how are you getting the medical industry to work alongside you and tell their patients about Hello Doctor? That's a great question. Um, in most cases, uh, we get straight to the consumer. So people who need it, just like you and, and me and probably your families as well, um, uh, can get directly to the app and start working with it. And we were very surprised to see that the, um, not only doctors are not objecting to it, but they actually embrace it. Uh, and we just started a pilot with very senior doctors who are recommending the product to their patients to see how that is working out. That's great. And everyone is calling Hello Doctor the missing link in medicine right now. How are you guys planning on connecting everything and what's your long-term growth strategy? That's a great question. Iran, would you like to answer that? Uh, sure. <laughs> so what we're planning on doing is, well, just like you said, we have to connect all the, all the different, uh, uh, the, the different uh, sources. sources, yeah. People collect medical files, paper medical files, and you also have uh, uh, digital digital medical files. So today we have uh, the option to collect uh, to insert paper the sorry to insert the papers into the application, um, which people really really love. It's amazing the feedback we get, really amazing. And now we're working on uh, allowing the patients to connect in digital medical files. So this will complete, will give a complete picture of your medical file. So you'll have also your paper, which today is a major, uh, um, you see that a lot of patients use and uh, use the paper. And also uh, to complete, to, to give a complete picture, we also give the option to connect to the different uh, EMRs, as you call it. Uh, into the app. Yeah, if, if I may add, yeah. um, from what we've learned uh, during, uh, during our journey, uh, we realized that patients, uh, which is you and me and our parents and uh, ev actually everyone, um, we are the hub of all the information. Um, we as patients have all the information we need to get the best, um, best care, uh, best medical care. And um, it was pretty amazing to find out that Many doctors, many hospitals, clinics in the U.S. and uh, in the Italian world, actually, but many in the U.S. Um, many of them don't have access to to our medical um, info. I mean, I as a patient have to collect this medical info and collect the papers and collect um, all the info that's relevant. If it's my symptoms, if, it, if we're talking about the, my lab results, everything possible. I as a patient uh, is the one who collects everything. Um, and that helped us realize that there's an, there's an actual need. Um, I mean, me as a patient, moving from doctor to doctor to a hospital to a second opinion doctor um, mm -hmm. to the ER, I was the one who took everything by hand and, and brought the information. And um, that helped us realize that there's an actual need because, um, as Iran mentioned, there are uh, paper files and, and digital files, and it's actually fermented all over the place. Um, so that's what we're solving at the Law Doctor, and, and it surprised even us. Uh, I mean, even us was surprised to find out how big the, the need is. It can uh, really be a life-changing need. It, it is, and yeah. we actually get, we actually get um, amazing feedback from, um, from users. 
saying that it actually um, helped them get better care. Um, Ma'am would probably be able to tell more about how it changes care for actual patients. Mm -hmm. Now, what was it like yeah, kind of in uh, the early stage when you were building your team? Yeah, Great question. <laughs> so, um, when we started thinking about Hello Doctor, we sat uh, the three of us um, and realized that in order to solve this problem, we need to bring a good proof of concept to the market because, yes, it's a big problem. A lot of companies tried to solve it and failed. Um, and it's going to be very hard to bring investors very early on without a good proof of concept. So uh, we gathered a team that was willing to work for our options, um, and we bootstrapped together for almost a year. Um, there was the three founders and three other team members that just worked with us uh, part-time for options, and that created a very, very dedicated team. Um, because everybody's working out of their own time, um, very dedicated to solve this problem together. Um, so we had two developers um, and a growth hacker working with us pretty much since day one. Um, and once we realized that we are able to solve this problem and we had a good proof of concept, um, we just raised money and they were all just waiting to quit their jobs and <laughs> join the team. So we didn't even have to deal later on with the problem that most startups run into. And, okay, we got money now. How do we build a good team here? So it was very, very uh, fluent and just everybody going in full time and starting to work together even harder to solve this problem. So as you move forward with that, you kind of start, as you said, you start out with that underdog mentality. Of we've got to prove ourselves and show that this concept is great. How do you keep that real dedication in your work, even later as Hello Doctor is now becoming hugely successful? That's a good question. Um, I think that a lot of our a lot of the joy of coming into work in the morning comes from our users. Um, as Eve said, we're getting amazing feed feedback from our users and coming to work and instead of, you know, um, proving to the world that you can improve the another um, <laughs> zero, zero, one percent mm -hmm. in, in sales this, this month, you're actually changing, changing somebody's life. Um, is something that really drives our team. Um, Zeev, do you want to tell about one of our patients, maybe? Yeah, um, we have we have a patient. Let's call him Jay. <laughs> um, this patient, um, he he got care from uh, from his um, uh, primary care physician, uh, and he got specific drugs that actually made his condition worse, mm -hmm. and. The minute he started using a low doctor and um, and getting the real uh, big picture, uh, actually having all the information from all sources, he was able to go again to his doctor and show him again the big picture, actually all the facts, uh, with no missing information, only the facts uh, and all the facts. Um, <coughs> he he got a different drug and he actually got better. Um, his yeah. vision is yeah. better, and I, I can talk about his condition, so I won't do it. But he actually got better care from uh, just by using a own doctor. And uh, if I may, um, yeah. And he, and he, I have to he is, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Maya. He was he was a week away from surgery. Um, oh wow. Yeah. yeah, he was a week away from surgery, and the fact that Hello Doctor was able to show his doctors that he needs to change his drugs, he just changed drugs and no surgery, his vision is back, um, and he thanks Hello Doctor for that, so it's just fun waking up in the morning and seeing this type of uh, thank you note from a patient. That is really wow. special. I don't think I'd sleep if I knew I was going to get those notes in the morning. Oh, boy. And so, Zeev, you had brought up the eBay Innovation Center. What are some of the best design practices that you've carried over from your experience over there? Oh, wow. Um, actually, I keep learning how to design it every day. Uh, even when I worked uh, at eBay, at the Innovation Center, and even today. Uh, but if there's one thing I learned from the great guys at the eBay Innovation Center is um, implement something, uh, test it. Um, and follow the statistics and keep improving. Um, that's something we did with every single um, feature uh, we launched. And uh, the great guys at the eBay Innovation Center keep doing it 
and um, we actually implement it ourselves. Uh, we, do, we never launch um, a, a feature without defining right at the beginning what would be a success mm -hmm. and what would be a fail of that feature. And we keep testing, uh, keep following statistics. Actually, that's if there's one tip I can give, um, it's this: measure everything you do. Everything you do needs to be measured. I, because if you don't measure the um, the, the things you do, it, it's success or failure. You're just wasting time. And when you're bootstrapping, is that the job of the designer? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? When you're bootstrapping a company, is that the job of the designer to measure? Um, it's, part, it's part of my job because I need to understand what I'm, and as a product manager and designer, I need to, um, I need to have reasons to do what I do. Uh, so um, on our team, it's not my job. Um, I'm not a numbers guy, I'm a pixels guy. Um, but we do have um, a dedicated person to do it, and uh, I work closely with her. Um, I couldn't do my job without her, so so she's she's doing an amazing job, and actually we keep improving everything uh, thanks to the combination of measuring and keep uh, keep working on, um, on features. That's great advice. So I want to talk to you guys something also that Zeev, you had mentioned in a past talk. You said when you stopped designing for sick people and you started designing for normal people, everything really changed for Hello Doctor. How do you guys approach just designing for normal people? So not assuming how your user is feeling, but actually going out and asking them. Okay, so um, the first thing to, to answer this question would probably will be... Um, my personal experience. Um, I started a low doctor because of my personal experience. I had in my stomach, no doctor could figure out what it is. So I wasn't, um, I wasn't in, I didn't need to just imagine things. Mm -hmm. um, I came with my own personal experience and it's, I believe it affected the way I work today. So that's uh, one thing. Um, the second thing is that we, when we launched the Dow Doctor, we realized that not too many people understand the terms we use, um, and not too many uh, people can relate to uh, medical terms, even I don't know what they mean. I mean, if uh, many people in, um, uh, have different um, meaning to medical terms, and I get, for example, I get stressed when I read medical terms because I really have no idea what they mean. So it, the, moment, the moment we realized that we need to help people understand the medical condition, uh, it completely changed the way we think. Uh, we started um, choosing words that are easy to understand. We started designing uh, simple, uh, simple UIs. Um, we started, if we even changed our marketing and the, all the words in our marketing messages. Um, we, we, Every time we write text and we write the text ourselves, we do everything in house. So every time we write text, um, we ping pong with each other to make sure it's it's understandable and it's readable, and it's um, it's and that it's written in a language that everyone understands. Mm -hmm. And we try to use um, positive feedback, feedbacks like woohoo and uh, that's great and you're awesome, just to just so people can relate. Um, and if we say um, that your total cholesterol is too high, um, we try to say it in a language that everyone will understand. And you don't have to be a doctor. I'll be a very bad doctor. Again, I'm a piece of stuff. Um, I, um, I put a lot of effort uh, to make sure the, the interface we design and, and present to users is understandable for you and me and my family and everyone else. So it was... It was a hard. Uh, it was a hard process to understand. That that's what we need to do. But since we, uh, since the moment we understand, we understood it. It was pretty simple because again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a patient, and I'm just a designer. Mm -hmm. And I need to make sure I understand it, and I need to make sure my co-founders understand it, and the, and my team, and then the users. And again, even there, we keep changing. We keep measuring, and we keep changing words and terms, however we can. So that ability to understand and make things simple, has, like you said, has also driven your marketing. What have some of your most successful marketing strategies been thus far? 
Great question. Um, so we have, I'll say, a short-term marketing strategy and a long-term marketing strategy. In the short term, what we're doing is raising awareness uh, between the people that really need Hello Doctors, early adopters. Most of our early adopters, we do have some techies that are early adopters that just want to have everything figured out and have everything on their mobile, and we totally get that. This is why we're releasing some, I'll even call it softer or healthier feature for, mm -hmm. for patients like measuring your cholesterol levels. But most of our patients that are very, very active are patients that need to coordinate care or have a complex mm -hmm. medical condition that, you know, have very, very um, long diagnosis process. So um, these patients often um, find themselves in patient communities talking to each other. So we're raising awareness in the patient communities to Hello Doctor. Um, we're working with nonprofits to do that. Um, we're creating very uh, accessible content around that. Uh, we just released a new article on arthritis, for example, and what type of food do you need to eat around arthritis? So we took very, very complex medical research from the Journal of American Medicine, simplified it into eat olive oils, avoid dairy, things, mm -hmm. th things that you and I can actually understand. Um, so we're, we're spreading content that is very um, similar to our own agenda. Um, yeah. We help people manage and understand their health. So we're doing that around uh, patient communities. And in the longer term, um, Hello Doctors marketing strategy is around big corporations with hospitals and insurance companies or payers um, that both have an interest in enabling patients to manage all the medical records um, and save costs for the hospital. Because in the big hospitals, uh, which... The, they, they're a cost-driven part of it, and the payers are, of course, a um, cost-driven part of it. Um, patients get to do tests over and over and over again without a real need, just because they couldn't find, you know, the previous no, test. Yeah, yeah but if, if your doctor doesn't have your blood work, you'll do it again, <laughs> no matter what happens. And if you have it, he will just give you an answer on the spot, and, and you, can, you can move on in the process. Um, so we, we already started a pilot with, um, with doctors that are recommending the products and we're, we're trying to figure out exactly where it fits in the workflows in the best way. Great. And now, Iran, something pretty interesting about you. I read that you're a graduate of an elite tech unit in the Israeli uh, Defense Forces. So yeah. drawing from your experience over there, what is the best method of working with a developer to efficiently launch a website? Mm -hmm. Well, a website or an app or whatever uh, you want to launch, I think the best way is um, always try to focus on uh, the minimal the, the minimal value of product. Uh, try to focus on what you can do and do it quick. And like uh, Ziv said, measure everything. Um, I think uh, what we did here, uh, we, we launched really quickly. We launched, I think it was... Uh, how long was within, it? Within three months. Three months, we launched the first product, uh, and we got really good, good uh, uh, reviews and uh, uh, feedback from the user. Um, so, just what I tell my friends and uh, people that ask me how to start, just always start simple. Always go the simplest you can. Definitely. Uh, developers have uh, sometimes a way of uh, making things too complicated. Product guys as well. Yeah, that's everyone. <laughs> so just always ask yourself, how can I, how can I make it simpler? Um, what I always ask myself is, um, uh, I, I take someone from my life that is not uh, a tech guy, uh, let's say my mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and uh, I ask myself, how would she, what does she need, and how would she use it, and uh, what can I do that, what am I doing that is uh, not necessary or uh, too much for her? Um, always ask yourself, how can I, I make it simpler? That's like that's the core thing I can tell. As you move forward designing more specific features, Oiran, what do you think is the best way to communicate with the developer as you now have a list of 10 or 15 new features that need to be added versus just four or five? So the communication between you and Zeev. <laughs> um, he asked about the communication between the two of us. Uh, <laughs> so about that. Um, do, you, do you want to answer? No, start. No, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, I'm the product guy and the designer, and uh, Iran is the tech guy. Uh, obviously, it's, it's not that simple 
always uh, because I want more and Iran wants push less. Push pull. Uh, yeah, but I think that creates um, a very healthy yeah. way of working because uh, we always find the balance between um, launching great stuff but launching them quick, as quick as possible. Um, we always start from ideas, we talk about the ideas, and then I take this idea in, in, um, and give specs for that idea and then design it. And once I design it, um, everyone, specifically everyone, uh, can actually have a look um, about what we were talking, which was a vague idea. Um, so my part is taking that vague, vague idea to an actual um, design. Uh, and then I get uh, replies from around, and he, his, his comments are always, uh, will always make the product better. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I give full respect for Ram and Mayan and everyone on the team um, for their amazing ability to give uh, respectful feedback, which is not always uh, that easy. Um, so when we communicate, sorry, go ahead. No, I think that I think the main thing is what what Ziv said is we always start from um, we have an idea for a feature and uh, and then we have we design it and we take a look and then the first thing we ask okay what can we remove mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, how do we break this down into uh, phases yeah okay so what can we start from and then what can we push for later um, and this is really a major thing that we do and if we don't do it we always Okay, we missed something. What can we remove? Uh, we ask each other hard questions about yeah, what really, really, really needs to be implemented. I mean, I can I can design for hours and days, and I enjoy it. But uh, at the end of the day, we need to actually ship things yeah. and ship them as quickly as possible. So Iran asked me hard question, and my aunt asked me a hard question, and I have to answer them. And since I have to answer them we get to a situation where we actually get to the minimum we need. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't cheat anything that's not in the core of the feature or the product. And, there, and also there's no, uh, there's no ego in what we no. do. So no. that's really important. Don't, don't get insulted. Don't, uh, don't think like if you get a feedback from one of, one of your uh, co-founders, it's always, always considered as a positive feedback. Definitely. Because that's that's what it is always. I think yes. that's some of the and best advice I've received lately. I need to go write that down. <laughs> <laughs> and and we're Israelis. We give very very straight feedback, so you have to really okay. take it, okay. embrace it in order to not to get insulted. <laughs> yeah. So I think that moves forward really perfectly to what we want to address with you guys next. Being in Palo Alto and being in Israel, how do you guys each capitalize on your strengths? to have that seamless division of labor. Okay. First, first, of, <laughs> yeah, first of all, it's hard, I do have to say. Uh, having a split in your team um, requires you to actively communicate with one another. Um, and the things I see here in Silicon Valley, being close to the market, being close to our clients, being close to even our users um, sometimes, are very, very different than how things look like um, in, in, where the team is based um, in Tel Aviv. And, and that's, that bridge uh, that we need to create of passing the, passing the information along from side to side and um, the bridge between the founders and, and even me and the team is very, very um, high maintenance, I would even say. Uh, and you need to, to work on it in order to make it work. Uh, but we're working on it for a year now, so... <laughs> We're doing fine. Um, I think that doing these types of split is very, very important for international teams. Um, the marketing and the business development has to be close to the market. The amount of, of knowledge that I gain just from being close here to the market is enormous. Just this morning, I got an email from, um, from our growth hacker that wrote a content. Um, and it was marked with kilometers, which is the, the common um, distance um, in, in Israel. Mm -hmm. But in the U.S., nobody know, have. Do you have any idea how, how large is a kilometer? No. So just being here and living here um, gives us the, the edge of you know, being able to adapt all the, the little tweaks that we need to do to really talk to our users in the best way. And on the other hand, having your team... Um, 
in, in, in its original uh, country uh, gives us a huge benefit. The ability to, to attract and to retain great developers in Israel is, I think, 100 times better than in Silicon Valley, no matter how I spin it around. Uh, we have really good engineers in the team, um, all graduates you know, from um, elite tech units in the Israeli army, which gives us a, an edge even in security. Uh, when we just started off, we realized that in the healthcare space, you need to, to have very high security. So I told Aaron, oh my God, we need to buy encryption now. And I just looked in the air like, we'll do encryption. <laughs> That's not a problem. Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, just having everybody work together as, as a core in, in the, the original state of, of, the, um, of the startup is, is another big benefit. Everybody close to home, most of, our, most of our team members have families. And, you know, moving families from place to place is hard. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives us a, a very big edge. I want to add that uh, from what I learned, uh, the platform platform doesn't matter. Um, we communicate with Maya on Hangouts, Skype, FaceTime, iMessage, <laughs> text, WhatsApp. The platform doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, the really important thing is communicate. I mean, yeah. the the platform has zero um, uh, zero effect on on how you communicate. You just need to communicate as much as possible talk with each other every day, be open and sincere and, and um, j just talk. That's, the, I think, the best, um, the best tip we can get. That's, and that's also true if you're uh, located in the same place. It's not just uh, for, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah but you got, it's a relationship. So. It is. Yeah. So now the future is incredibly bright for you guys, and that's largely uh, with helping monitor people's health trends. So. Tell us where you are going from here. I mean, what are your biggest dreams for the company? Do you want to tell the, about the version you just submitted to the App Store? Yes. Run? Breaking <laughs> news right here. Yes. Okay, um, okay so today uh, we help people manage their medical, uh, med medical file. Uh, again, from every source uh, to, every, um, to every doctor. What we really want to do is help people understand their medical condition and the condition of their loved ones. Um, we want to make uh, medical information accessible and easy to understand. So actually, just a few hours ago, we submitted uh, a new version to the App Store, uh, which is really exciting. Um, and in this version, we help people uh, understand their cholesterol, cholesterol level, I'm sorry. Um, again, if I uh, personally take a look at uh, blood work, I have no idea what it means. All these terms, all these numbers, they mean nothing to me. Um, so we did the research and uh, we, we figured out how to, how to make this information easier to understand. So in, the, in this version that was submitted, um, we will guide the user to look for just the specific uh, terms and numbers they need to look at. And once the user um, um, enters the, these details, these four, details, uh, four details, out of this long list of details in the blood work, um, we will immediately help him um, see vis visualization of, of what, is, what the cholesterol level means. And that's the beginning of a vision. I mean, I want to, I want to help everyone uh, understand what their condition is, uh, how to manage it, how to communicate with the doctor better. So with this cholesterol level, which is again just the beginning, uh, you can actually take your iPad or your iPhone, show it to your doctor and ask what I need to do. That's it. We just got an email that the app is in review as we speak, so yay for us. Yeah, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're excited to go download it, and we can't wait to share this with our community because you guys are fulfilling such a great need. And like you said, it's for people who really need it with serious health issues. But for someone like Chase and I who just want to have our information right on our phone with us, we can download it the same. Can you let people know how they can get in touch with you guys and start using Hello Doctor? Sure. Yeah, sure. It's available on the App Store. Uh, so you can download it to your iPhone or your iPad and just start using 
sharing it. Uh, if you have paper records, you just take a picture of it. If you have digital record, you can email us any type of records, and they get magically organized on your phone, uh, which for people that have, you know, binders, it's kind of, it's very magical. Um, and uh, soon you'll be able to connect more and more uh, clinics and hospitals directly to Hello Doctor. But um, you can just go to the App Store, download it, start using it now. You can always send us feedback. We love feedback, as you can understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and tell us what you think. Yeah, um, go to get.hello.do when you get right to the App Store. Great. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having Thanks. us. Having us.